Hello and welcome to the Untranslatable Podcast. We are here recording episode 124, my first impressions of China and what it's like to be in China for the first time. So I'm really excited to uh, tell you guys about some of my experiences on these uh, first couple days here in China. It's been a great time so far and I'm so happy to be here. And also, if you couldn't guess, the reason why I'm talking half NPR voice today is because I'm in a hotel in Beijing and it is 6 a.m. while we're recording and the walls are paper thin here. So I don't want to wake up any of my other hotel guests around me. So we'll be a little bit quieter on my end today, but I hope you guys enjoy the more NPR style delivery. So with that being said, I have to say I am very excited and happy to see my buddy. And it's been a while since we've done such a remote podcast, so we're looking forward to bringing you a lot of fun episodes uh, an ocean away. So, Jared, with that being said, what's going on, buddy? How are you? It's good to see you, buddy. I feel like you've been through some sort of gigantic journey, but really, I guess you just got on an airplane. But for some reason, I'm just sitting here, and I'm so proud of you. (laughs) I feel like you're a parent. I I appreciate it. (laughs) I'm like, look at that. He's doing it. it. He's out there doing it. Um, I have to say the the initial journey was very easy. I'm surprised. I can imagine. Now, I, I mean, it's just a normal plane slept. flight, isn't it? Right, but I was worried that you know, I don't know, you know, you know me. I'm a warrior in general, but no. I thought, come you know, on, what what will the <laughs> what will the process through through customs be? How how will oh, that okay. go? But it all went really smoothly. Uh, and the nice thing was too, you know, going direct from Detroit to Beijing had no real real concerns of you know my luggage being lost or anything so yeah yeah but no no good, man jogging through london heathrow airport uh <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly like i might have had to do a couple months ago right um yeah well please but before we get into this i mean we could we could talk for three hours straight with no sort of uh podcast here but please first everyone spread a little love we're not going to talk for three hours straight with no podcast here uh chad won't let us do that anymore (laughs) (laughs) spread a little love please follow us (laughs) on instagram untranslatable podcast at this point you've already seen that chad has posted uh his luggage now let me ask you this chad now i know Mm -hmm. i'm doing our plugs here at the top let me ask you this why is it that your personal instagram always gets the better pictures your personal instagram had a nice selfie of you then your luggage in the back seat and then the airplane we get just you know, the floor of your bedroom first and i saw that <laughs> and i'm like I, at first i saw the picture of, of you uh, that you post i was like oh that's so lovely and i and I, and I went on with my day and then uh, i was like oh sweet show posted something to our instagram and i was like all right i see how it is i see how it is <laughs> But you can see, I Chad... I don't have an answer for you. Uh, Chad <laughs> was um, a little bit smarter by um, actually using double the amount of luggage as you used before, essentially, right? Yep. Because this yep. time, I think you've learned after your last 10-month stint that uh, the whole not buying anything might not be uh, realistic. Oh, no, no. And so, I'm planning anyway. on buying lots of stuff here. But yeah, check out our Instagram. <laughs> now Chad's going to crazy. <laughs> uh, Twitter, <laughs> spread a little love. Just a little one, the number one. That's where you can find our episodes and whatnot. And sometimes songs at the pod. I'm not really doing that as much anymore. I don't know why. May- I think just because I'm lazy. Listen, I'm working again, okay, people? You're busy, And I have man. a lot going out of my life. Leave me alone, okay? Please. <laughs> I realize. <laughs> Slipping on gator piss. Um, but also, spread a little love. With five-star reviews, please, on iTunes and Stitcher. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. And you can look at us on YouTube. You can uh, see our lovely faces once again across the country or continent or a globe. There we go. There we <laughs> um, You heard that flat earthers around the globe. So, yeah, dude. Um, now, I don't, I don't want to talk about everything. I don't even, I don't even know where to go because I just want to talk about. Can we, I guess we'll, let's just talk about China stuff. We can do a little teaser for now. Sure. All right. How was the flight? We'll get into before you even get there. How was the morning? What did you do that day before you even got there? Before, what do you mean the, the like morning? Like the, of my the Sunday morning, Sunday morning here here in the good old United States. Here in the U.S. had uh, had my uh, tasty breakfast, uh, typical American breakfast: eggs, bacon, hash browns, and toast with oh. my parents. So that was good. My you dad betcha. makes a mean breakfast, so that was delicious. And uh, I was running around like a madman, to be honest, because I, because you and I were out till what, probably 
10 10 30 i think is around maybe something like that probably yeah that's somewhere around there and and so the night the night before i left just to fill our listeners in we had uh, a great dinner at the grizzly peak but i Mm -hmm. had made a serious mistake by ordering an appetizer and a main course meal i probably should have (laughs) just gotten two apps would have been cheaper anyways and wouldn't have been i was uncomfortably full so I wanted to do a bunch of stuff when I got home, and I just felt terrible. So I oh basically my sat around and and tried to spend the evening with my parents, and um, yeah, so ended up having to do everything I wanted to do that evening that morning. So I, mm. I basically made sure I double checked everything, made sure I had. And your plane left at two fifty five, one fifty five, one fifty five, one fifty five p.m. Yep. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, and the the crazy thing is, though, buddy, is that I was very surprised by how empty the airport was. I thought on a Sunday it would be fairly busy. Now, my flight was full, but going through security and everything else was very quick. And uh, I will say this, though, the the gentleman at the counter wa- had a bit of an attitude with me because I had my boarding pass on my phone, and apparently for international flights on Delta, a little fun fact for all of our listeners out there flying international on Delta, at least what they told me in Detroit is you need a paper boarding pass. So I had to go print oh, my boarding on. pass. Oh, come on. I've never heard that before. Yep. Yep. And hmm. the funny thing is, is that the guy had quite the attitude. I went up there with my bags. My mom was helping me uh, bring one of my suitcases, and um, it was just so funny because we get up there, and I'm like, yeah, I to Beijing, and... You know, he could have he could have just been like, "Okay, sir, like we'll we'll need you to go grab your boarding pass from the kiosk." But he was like, "Well, I don't even remember what he said." But he just had his tone and his attitude. I was just like, "Really, guy? Like you you're really gonna be that way?" So <laughs> went around, printed off my boarding pass, and then uh, there was still no line to get checked in, which I could not believe. So then I was looking. And there was a there was a woman, and then the the cranky guy on the on the right. And so I was like, I hope the woman will call me over. And she called me over, motioned me over to check my bags with her, and she was so much nicer. So oh so nice. Yeah. Um, but it was crazy though, too, man, going through security because I have a Kindle, an iPad, and a laptop and a, here with me. So I had to take all of three of those things out. <laughs> <laughs> That's that was sorry. <laughs> um, Just to be clear. <laughs> right um well i'm pretty sure you wouldn't make make it past security with with that kind of stuff on you but anyways <laughs> so um so yeah but then i went through and that was all fine um and then it was smooth sailing from there uh the food on delta was pretty decent and uh Be- yeah so because it was, it was a straight talk- because it was a straight flight did you have to go through um any uh any sort of like extra security when you got there or was it just that was that was no more security well that's a, that's a great question i i don't know what the standard security procedures are since it's my first time here in china well so i'm I, saying I if you were to have like to... say gone on a layover um you would have had to like go through security again or maybe i don't know i don't know that's a good question i don't know i don't know what i'm asking uh, i'm just i think i think i think it depends if it's a domestic layover no if it's an international one that would be the first time you go through right. customs but yes. i would assume well well i think that also depends because i'm used to having a layover in a european country in the eu within schengen you don't have to go through customs twice but i would be willing and to wait, bet wait you say that, that again with eu with what with EU, with so they call it Schengen. That's the region within the EU where you don't actually. Oh, I've really never need heard of passport. that. Yes, and so basically the way it works is if I fly into Frankfurt and I, like when I went to Prague, I flew into Frankfurt, I went through customs there, then I flew into Prague and I didn't go through customs in the Czech Republic because it's all part of the EU. But oh. I'm thinking if if but I would assume I don't know this for sure, so take this with a grain of salt. But I would assume that if I were to have a layover maybe in Paris or Heathrow or Frankfurt, I would still go through customs there, but I would mm-hmm. be willing to bet you because it's a completely different system, I would also have to go through customs again in China. Now, I could be wrong about that, but I would assume because okay. there's no relationship. Like the EU, it's all kind of... They're all one. using the same intranet. <laughs> Exa- exactly. Whereas here, it's obviously very different. Um, so yeah, but I had to fill in an arrival card and at first, I was a little worried with the arrival card because I still don't actually... I know I have an apartment, but I haven't been told the address because my um, 
my foreign affairs you, officer at my university will be picking me up from the train station today. And will that person be giving you the key? I would assume so, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was the running joke this So this you whole, can't even like Google map it if you wanted to. Nope. Nope. Damn. I know it, I know it's near the, the new campus. Or, sorry, WeChat map. I don't mean to <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well you can use Apple Maps here. Apple Maps work. Uh, and I usually yeah, use Yeah, but I've heard they suck. I've, I've only used Google Maps. I always use Apple Maps in the States. So we'll, we'll Okay. See. Um, we'll see. But yeah, so it's it's been good though. It's been good getting here. It was a little strange the first evening um, because in order for my phone Wi-Fi to work, you have to have a Chinese number. So what I would do is I realized if you went and clicked on the Wi-Fi, put in the initial password to log into it, if you left the login screen up long enough, you'd get Wi-Fi temporarily. So I used that to send you a quick message, wow. my parents a quick message, my sisters a quick message, and that's about it. Now, the strange thing is, though, Jared, I'm using Already, my Wi-Fi uh, on my laptop. I'm trying to figure out a way to get around the system. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to make it work so I can contact people because I didn't want people to worry. You know, I'm alive. Here. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Um, but the funny thing was is that uh, on my laptop, it works fine. So I think there must be – it notices you're coming from a mobile phone, and so that's mm. why you need to use that – like a like a cell phone login whereas with my laptop there's really no way to do that so it works fine on my laptop so when i figured that because my first night here i didn't even try my laptop because i was like well i'm gonna need a chinese number so that was kind of stupid of me but i thought i'm gonna need a chinese number there's no point in me even trying to log on here and i'm glad i did because i initially had told you we won't be able to record i think until i get to jinan thankfully i'm Mm. still in beijing and we're able to record so life is good so that's another Uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves though real quick we are well, yeah. let me ask you this. But I, uh-huh. What movies did you watch on the airplane? Let's let's talk about that in the main segment because I got a lot to okay. say about those. Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> oh, I'll just I'll give you a teaser. You a little... I'll give you a teaser. I watched four movies on the flight. Damn. So we'll talk That's about impressive. those four movies. Yeah. So we'll okay. talk about those four movies in the main segment. But I do have All right. some All right. love to spread. So how about we spread a little love? All right, so dude. My first one goes out to a server um, in Pennsylvania, in uh, Elizabeth Township, Pennsylvania. No idea how close that was to your old stomping grounds in Philly. But this is an incredibly know. heartwarming story. And sadly, I don't have the server's last name, but the server's name is Dylan. And the story goes like this, Jared. There was a 91-year-old World War II veteran who came to this diner who was sitting by himself. You know, I'm assuming, hate to get dark here, but I'm assuming when you're 91, you probably... Don't have a ton of people to go to <laughs> breakfast with. Um, that's just a part of the part of the game. Not a ton of people live to be ninety-one, and so he was sitting there by himself. And the server Dylan was um, talking to him, and the man had uh, uh, one. He was a bit hard of hearing, so uh, he apologized to Dylan, and he dropped to one knee um, so he could hear him better. And uh, and and the man was you know talking to him quite a bit, and Dylan patiently listened and gave him his full attention. And uh, the man apologized for talking so much, and he said, you know, I'm, I'm very alone now, and I often don't have anyone to talk to. And Dylan smiled and said he enjoyed listening. Well, this had caught the attention of pretty much everyone else in the diner. And then Dylan eventually came on break and uh, asked the gentleman if he could sit by him and sat by him and had a wonderful conversation with him. And people were so touched by this and just by the 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 world war ii veteran and i wish i had his name but his name is not here either um that uh somebody offered to pay for his meal so uh, basically they paid it forward and dylan was sitting there and the old man was so touched one by dylan's friendliness and being able to um sit there and have a nice conversation with him and basically what uh what i've read here is if you are ever at the eaton park in bell vernon Ask for Dylan if he's your server. You will definitely get great service. And I think it's great that he is willing <laughs> he's to go like, above people and beyond. People stop asking for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, this I'm is so busy, exhausting. After, <laughs> after I tried to be a good person, right? I don't but have I time to have great. a conversation with everyone in this restaurant. That that is true, but I think it's great. You know, he could have just been on break and not given this gentleman the time of day. But I think it's really great, and it's a very heartwarming story. And uh, so shout out to you, Dylan. We're sending lots of love your way for being you such an amazing person and a great server as well, because I'm sure that is not always an easy job. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. How much do you have the any shout outs for, Jared? 
he didn't tip. Oh, wait, someone paid because, the meal for him. That's yeah. right. But I'm sure Damn. he got a decent tip, I would imagine. Uh, Do you have no, any I don't have any shout outs. Shout out to you for okay. uh, making it to China alive in one piece. I appreciate not that, it. You know, not that it's hard to do, but. <laughs> right. Well, I have two more shout outs. Uh, okay. And so this one's really interesting. I thought this made me think of you, Jared, because um, for our listeners out there, Jared now has an, f- has an electric car, a Volt, and it's sweet. And he was nice enough mm-hmm. to take me around town in it on Saturday. It's a plug in hybrid, just to be clear. Right. Well, right. Anyway, <laughs> this is crazy. And this story made me think of you, Jared. So there's a German company. Um, I'm trying to find the name again. There is a German company that has uh, de- developed something called the Electro or elect- uh, Electo Dumper, or known as an e dumper, which is a 45 ton construction vehicle that is used to transport, li- transport limestone and rock from Swiss mountaintops. Uh, and so the way this works, though, Jared, is this like I mentioned, you don't actually have to plug it in or charge it. Or maybe I didn't mm-hmm. mention that. So you don't have to no, plug it in. No, you didn't mention that. It. That was going to be um, my question. So, How long is that suspension right. cord? Well, well, so this is the crazy thing. So the vehicle works by ascending steep inclines with an with an empty cargo. And then once it's loaded up with all of that ore, you know, the rocks and different things from the mountaintop, mm. it uses a regenerative braking system, which oh, captures makes all of sense. the energy uh, traveling downhill so that it, that it can completely power itself up for the next uphill journey. And here is the German manufacturing company. It's called Kuhnschweiz. And not Schweiz like the country Switzerland, Jared, but S C H W E I T Z. And that uh, coon like Schweiz. the racist slur. Also correct, right? Uh, K U H N. So this is a German manufacturing company responsible for creating the e dumper, and they're saying they make an average of twenty trips up and down a mountain every day. And the trucks are. This is what's crazy. These numbers boggle my mind. The trucks are able to generate more than two hundred kilowatt hours of surplus energy daily or 77 megawatt hours per year. Uh, and so now you may be wondering, Jared, well, how much diesel fuel have they been saving by doing this? And, you know, you uh, took the words right out of my mouth. I figured. And collectively, it says here that the trucks have already saved an estimated 76,000 liters of diesel fuel and 200 tons of CO2 from entering the atmosphere since it was an unveiled in April. And researchers estimate that the vehicles will continue to save up to uh, 1,300 tons of CO2 and 500,000 liters of diesel over the course of the next 10 years. Um, yeah. So I think that's as, great. As the owner of a plug-in hybrid, this completely makes sense to me because they it does, you know, my car has regenerative braking too. And uh, in a lot of situations, you can essentially come to a full stop without even touching the brakes. And, oh, that's cool. um, and so, and I've also heard stories of like, say someone has some sort of electric car and they go, they've gone to the t- top of Pike's Peak, and you can, you know, get down the entire thing without your foot on the, um, without your foot on the ga- or brake, excuse me. And it just it uses regenerative braking as a as a brake, and uh, you and if, if people have filled up like you know their full battery or half their battery just going down Pike's Peak or something like that. That's so awesome. yeah, that that and, and I totally understand that. And that's that's uh, you know what that is, Chad. What's that? Solid German engineer. Brilliant. There we go. <laughs> brilliant. Right. Nice. That's brilliant. It definitely is, Jared. And and hopefully, uh, with as these technologies continue to improve, we can slowly move away from uh, fossil fuel vehicles. I think that shout awesome. out was right up my alley. I like that one. I figured you enjoy that. That's why I stacked mm-hmm. that one in the middle for you. But I'm I don't know if I would necessarily say saving the best for last, but I think this is a really important one as well we've given leonardo dicaprio a couple shout outs before and he deserves a, a brand new <laughs> one today and that is because he's got he's a new a f- 18 year old girlfriend yes she's beautiful <laughs> though uh because leonardo <clears throat> dicaprio has launched a five million dollar emergency fund to help combat the An- amazon rainforest fires um, mm. and so i think it's it's fairly well known by a lot of people now that he definitely is an environmental activist and he's done a lot to, you know, donate, put money where his mouth is, basically, for a lot of environmental things that he has seen. And, and so what's, what's great is, you know, he started this emergency response fund. Uh, well, not only him, but also Earth Alliance, which is a, an organization that was created by DiCaprio and philanthropist Lorraine Powell uh, Jobs and Brian Sheth last month. And so basically this independent nonprofit has uh, recruited, sorry, I can't talk today apparently in this jet lag, I tell you what, Jared, 
Yeah. This nonprofit has recruited teams of scientists and conservationists to protect vulnerable ecosystems, promote renewable energy growth, and secure the rights of indigenous people worldwide. So I think this is absolutely amazing. And uh, I hope that they will be able to help out everyone in the rainforest right now, all the indigenous people, all of the vulnerable ecosystems and everything by doing this $5 million emergency fund to help combat these fires. So I think it's great. So shout out to you, Leo, and shout out to his Earth Alliance uh, you betcha. organization now, as well. Didn't you, didn't you explain to me the other day why, how these fires started? Was that you? I, I don't know if I did, but from mm. what... now. I don't know how true this is, but from what I've been told, well, not well, from what I've heard on the media, is that um, is that some of these were human-made fires, as in they were started on purpose. Uh, mm-hmm. now some people will tell you it's because of the government in Brazil, um, them being unhappy with, uh, I guess, a few weeks ago, I forget the name of the tribe, but there was an indigenous people that actually took the country of Brazil to court, and they ended up winning. And then a few weeks later, these fires started happening. I'm pretty sure some of these fires happened on their land. Um, mm. Now, but this is from the media. I don't know how credible the media sources are. I don't know enough about it to say whether that's true or not. But it does make you wonder. I mean, I don't. I couldn't tell you the last time that I have heard of forest fires being to this extent. Um, yeah, because especially know in the happen. rainforest, doesn't that seem like an odd right. place to be for for rain for a wildfire to spread? Right. Now, I think occasionally they can have uh, forest fires over there, but but once again, yeah, I don't think they spread to this extent. But, you know, I don't want to I don't want to, you know, give our listeners out there false information. So I'm not really sure. But Listen, that's what I've heard we don't claim to be sources. any sort of reputable source on that's almost true. literally anything, to be honest. That's, with you. <laughs> other than maybe language learning. But yeah, you're right. You're right. I maybe mean, I've forgotten most learning. of my German at this point. I don't even know if I can claim that anymore. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm an expert on uh, when we do trips together, so because uh, I was true. the one on those trips, and that's what we're talking about. That's right. Um, okay. Do you want to do some untranslatables? Do, I, I was waiting for I your do. clock to interrupt us, but you're. Uh, I'll have to. Oh, we'll have to do I should the, have brought uh, the cuckoo with me. The digital that version. That was my first mistake, Jared. I didn't bring the, the untranslatable the, with me. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought you had a whole suitcase. Remember, I was asking you, how do you feel about those wheelie hard suit, the four wheeled hard suitcases? Right. You said, I love it, but I only put my clock in there. That's, that's, that's true. <laughs> All right, time for some untranslatables. <laughs> um, my first one is Farsi, and it's Go uh, Ziadi Nakord, and it is uh, Don't Eat a Lot of Shit. <laughs> that, that's it? Don't Eat a Lot of Shit. Don't eat. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is that like slipping on gator piss? I was just gonna say, is that what it means? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's means also you're... an untranslatable that I made up r- randomly. Right. So <laughs> I mean, I would say that one means you're like this is also of, this, that's you're messing up. You're you're not doing the right thing. I would say for slipping on gator piss. Now, don't eat shit. Uh, mm, it's not like is, is that you're like messing beef? up. You're not. I have no so, idea. What, what is it? I'm going to give it to you. Uh, no. Oh, okay. I'm going to give that to you. Uh, the uh, the judges were like, no, but I said, hey, listen. Listen, Karen, we've had this discussion. Uh, this is my podcast, God damn it! I don't care what the lawyers say. Uh, it's a reminder to not overstep your boundaries or get in okay. over your head with life and or gossip. That so I would sense. say you're on the right track there, but I didn't know how to guide you. That's the thing. Right. Right. I definitely got to be careful with that over here. That is for sure. There's yeah. Some, some certain topics that uh, you should not say and you shouldn't overstep certain boundaries. So, yeah, that's Look, very good. Okay, Jared. Stack, mine that will, for you we'll today get, are, get to that in our Song of the Pod, too. Fun fact. Right. My, my, uh, my untranslatables today are all Portuguese because... Uh, I had a nice chat with my friend Andrea from Brazil, and I figured, you know what? Because of her, I'll do some Portuguese ones today. So here we go. My first one, Jared, is vai pentear macacos, which means go comb monkeys. Um, go comb monkeys, Jared. It's like get out of here, there essentially. You go. Yeah. yeah. Get lost. Yeah, yep. get lost. Get lost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
nope. eat dirt. No, that's not the same thing. Um, all right, my next one is go comb the monkeys. I like that one. My next that's one, one. is uh, Scottish, actually. Uh, I don't really know how to do a Scottish accent, but it's also written in English, but like in their accent. Oh, really? Okay, we'll try yeah. to read it. A while on by your hurt. No, a while on by your height. A while on by your height. And and what is that in American English? Away and boil your head. That also means like get lost, doesn't it? It does, yeah. All right, I have one more Scottish one I want to do as well. That one, I, okay. just, I just want. It's uh, your boom zoot the windy. Your, your, your boom zoot the windy. Out. Your bum is out the window. Yeah, I don't. That don't. That didn't sound Scottish, but that's what is written there. Your bum's out the window. Oh, that's pretty good. Better, probably not. But it's like uh, windy. <laughs> windy. Yeah. Uh, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, we've probably just offended some Scottish people, Jared. Uh, uh, let's see here. Your bum's out the I'm, window. Is that like your? You're like completely off track, or 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 you're completely. I have no idea. All right. You're talking trash. You're not making any trash. sense. You're not making any sense. Okay. Yeah, you need to stop giving up so quickly. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. My I don't next even have a chance to is, say yes, Chad. Is Portuguese as well, and it is muitos anos a virar frangos. And, you, and anos well, you said in, what? Oh, I was, I was gonna say like multiple or many years. I yep, heard that there, or something like that. Yep, many years turning chickens. Okay. Man, you never let me guess. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, many years turning chickens. Or it's like, I, um, I waited a long time for this. You know, I thought that too, but that's not the case. Um, so, you know, Jared, a few years... I, I would say our untranslatable deciphering skills have gotten pretty good at this point. But just imagine where they'll be by episode 500. And somebody could say... You know, Chad and Jared have many years turning chickens with untranslatable phrases. Oh, this is like they—they've—they're very experienced. There you go. They Get got a lot of uh, time under their belt. Is that what would? Yeah. For? Or or just have a lot of experience. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. Absolutely. Well, Jared, I think it's time to talk about first impressions of China, and let's yeah. let's start with the movies since since that's kind of fresh in my mind. So I told you I watched four movies on the flight. And I have to say that was my first time flying Delta internationally, and uh, they're great. I would highly recommend them if you are <laughs> traveling places. Um, Do people find uh, you annoyingly positive about everything? Does that ever get annoying? Pr- probably. Okay. I definitely got called. I definitely got called out on it a couple times in the Czech Republic. Uh, people, people, people were I like, just, "We don't know if it's." Go ahead. I was just thinking of your intro to the podcast because you're like, and I just here in China, it's been bright and sun, sunny and shiny, and everything's wonderful. I was, and I just thought that in my head then, and then it's just like, uh, Delta's the greatest airline. No, no one ever has anything good to say about airlines, but you happen to find the best one. I guess so. Yeah. Well, the, well <laughs> even better than Lufthansa because I do a lot of Delta, and I envy Lufthansa. Well, so here's the thing: I love Lufthansa as well, and I think if I fly to Germany, I'll probably go Lufthansa. But here's the thing. The fact that I have two free checked bags, 50 pounds each for Delta, that alone already put me right. on a good foot with them. You know, right. just because I was able, like you said, I was able to bring double the stuff I brought to the Czech Republic, which was great. And mm-hmm. um, so, yeah, for free. So that, that, yeah. that was for free. Right. And I, I paid, you know, if you count being overweight, both while well, I was overweight, on the way to the Czech you Republic. You did have to buy two seats. To... People don't know. Chad's, if, if you don't watch on YouTube <laughs> or follow us on, on Instagram, he's 657 pounds. So that's, that's he true. had to buy a whole uh, row of seats. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, even flying with Lufthansa to and from the Czech Republic, that cost me an extra with, with the overweight fee. Well, actually, no, it only cost me $130 because the woman in Prague was awesome and didn't charge me for my second bag, which I don't know how the heck that worked. But right. I greeted her in check. I, I think she dealt with a couple Winked of at uh, her. people that were a little grumpy before me, and I had a big smile on my face because I was excited to you know, see you and my friends and family. And, and the, so, uh, But the thing yeah. is, it was still $130. That was the good price that you got. Correct. 
Correct. Um, correct. That's and still here a lot. It was zero dollars, of course. Right. It definitely was. Especially in comparison um, to zero. <laughs> right. Exactly. So yeah, but anyway, so Delta, Delta, the flight was good. I sa- what was interesting though is, I sat by, uh, um, I sat by a child who had. Well, there were a lot of like people eight, on the plane. Eight or nine. Yeah. Oh yeah. Plane was full. There were only okay. a couple empty seats. Plane was full. Okay. But the funny thing was, is I sat by this really nice um, American Chinese woman. She was great. Um, and then I was right in the middle seat. And then uh, yeah, we the talked about was, that. Right. the 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 window seat was uh, this. Chinese kid and his parents were in the row in front of us. It was his mom, his dad, and his little brother. And when they first came on the plane, um, before we, you know, took off and everything, he was like kind of smacking his brother and they were kind of joking around. And I was like, oh no, this is going to be bad. <laughs> but I have to say, the kid hey was kids, during the slipping flight. on gator piss. Right. Now, the one thing he kept doing though, and the, the flight attendant got kind of uh, nasty with him a couple times because she, well, she had to keep telling him. So I guess she didn't really get nasty with him. She just, was much more stern with him is he kept peeking up like the little curtain or whatever you call it that. Um, and it was, and they told us to keep them all shut because it was, it was when they were trying to get people to sleep on the plane, which I just watched movies through. Cause I, could, I was too excited to sleep, Jared. I'm going to be honest with you. I was super excited for this experience. And I just, I couldn't, I couldn't turn my brain off. So, so I watched movies instead and I watched four movies. The first movie so you I watched, stayed awake for like 13 hours straight. No, I did sleep for an hour and a half. Okay? Yeah, that's so not I was cool. able. Come on. Yeah, it, yeah. So, uh, but anyway, so I watched four movies. The first one I watched was Aquaman with Jason Momoa, and that was awesome. Uh, <laughs> okay. Definitely, definitely. I, I mean, I love cheesy superhero movies, anyways, <laughs> and I, I love Jason that. Momoa. So, so I wouldn't have I given bet you a do. bad review regardless. Um, but it was cool. But, 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 look. Damn but it. The funny yeah. Thing, but the funny thing <laughs> about watching wanted. that movie, though, Jared. Is there were a couple times where I was almost in tears because like he had to say goodbye to his mother um, and 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 me having just left my parents. I think that was a little raw. And, you know, and I'll be honest, I cried at the airport when I said goodbye to my mom. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Um, so, yeah. So that you seem like you're about to cry emotional. right now. You never know. But yeah, got, got <laughs> a little emotional know. watching that movie. And then uh, after that, my parents had told me about uh, the movie Christopher Robin, which is about the guy from Winnie the Pooh. And so the concept of the movie is that he he grows up, he has a family, and he works all the time, and his marriage is kind of falling apart. His relationship with his daughter isn't great because all he values is work. And so somehow Winnie the Pooh ends up coming through the tree um, of a hundred <laughs> acre woods and uh, ends up in London. And then, um, of course, Christopher Robin is sitting on the bench across from Pooh or, or behind Pooh and then they end up um he ends up seeing him and, and because you know a talking bear talking teddy bear is obviously a very weird thing he has to like hide him in his jacket and mm. has to get him back home so it's kind of like a the, kid's version of Ted yes but it I would well yeah it was PG-13 I think um, but still kids version, yeah, I guess. Ted was but definitely whole, not PG thirteen. R rated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, it was a really cute movie. It was great. Um and he helps uh basically he learns that family is the most important thing. I think he knew it all along but had just prioritized work in order to try to provide for his family. He didn't realize that, you know, things were kind of going down the tubes. So so that was a super cute movie. I really enjoyed it. Then after that, I watched, which I think was my favorite movie, The Whole Plane Ride. I watched a movie called The Green Book. Have you ever heard of this movie before, Jared? Mm, the Green Book. Does it have something to do with black people? It does. Uh, do you, do you know that, what The Green Book is? Why didn't you is? ask me if I have it, if I heard the first two? You racist. No. Uh, <laughs> I've heard of it, but I don't, I don't know... Um, I don't know. I don't know about like what it is, but I've heard so of the it. movie. The movie was, and it's based on a true story. And the movie was set in the. I was this the one with the, the driver, f- the white dude driver? Yep. Yeah. You yeah. Know what I'm talking about. Yeah, because black people make fun of that movie. Oh, do they? Well, they say it's just like it's just cheesy. I think is what people say. It's it's definitely cheesy, but and I they think, don't like the I story th- of like like the was he like a racist or something and he came around oh, yeah. when uh yeah it's just a, yeah. I don't yeah 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 well I'm getting yeah. all this information from like podcasts and Twitter <laughs> right 
I mean, I guess I could see that, but I mean, the the thing the thing that I do like about the about the film is that, well, yeah, he does come around, um, and but I also love the actors. Uh, it's Viggo Mortensen and um, oh, I never pronounce his name right. Uh, it's Maher Mahershala oh. Ali. How how do you say his? Mahershala Ali? Thank you. Yeah, I can never mm-hmm. pronounce his name right. Um, Mahershala Ali. And one, I think uh, Mahershala Ali is a great actor. I mean, Viggo Mortensen yeah. is great too, but but just the way he portrayed um, Dr. What was his name? Dr. Don Shirley. It was just awesome. He's very eloquent and well-spoken. And the music was- that they play in the film is great. And Viggo Mortensen plays this guy. They call him Tony Lip or Tony Vallelonga. Is this kind of rough and tumble Italian guy in the Bronx who's definitely racist. But the, probably my favorite <laughs> part of the movie, though, Jared, is... Is that um, so? He, he be speaks a pitch Italian for movies, R- right? Uh, <laughs> but he he speaks Definitely Italian racist. with a lot of his friends, and uh, and a lot of times it's to say like racist shit is when they speak Italian, yeah. right? Like and saying so Mulian or stuff like that. Have you heard I, of that yeah, racist and, term? I have not, but they they call it, they. I only read the subtitles because I don't speak Italian. Uh, mm. But they kept calling him an eggplant, which was kind of weird, dude. But the fu- that's what I'm talking about. Let me expl- Let me teach you a new racial slur here. Okay, that's okay, mu- okay. a mulian is an Italian word for eggplant. Okay. And they call that's him eggplant because it's essentially saying like he's so black they're purple or something like that. It's like a term oh, for like okay. a super black person. And so yeah, mulian is eggplant. Oh, okay. Well, there, there, you, there go. you go. You learned a new racial uh, slur today. Oh, great. Peachy, just, <laughs> just what we're trying to teach you on the Untranslatable <laughs> Podcast. You're wonderful. Um, great. But the but the funny thing is, is that so he's so he he is this guy's driver, and they pull up in a in a hotel down south, and he's getting his luggage out, and then he runs into a couple of buddies from the Bronx who are you know have mob ties, and they tell him they're like, "Why are you working for this? What was it, Mulian?" What? You know, all right, the, all right. Hey, Chad. Slipping on gator <laughs> piss. <laughs> yeah, I think and it's so, Mulian. So, I think it's Mulian. So, so, they, so they're talking in Italian, and <clears throat> uh, Dr. Don Shirley is kind of waiting for him. And then uh, later that night, you know, they, they tell him, they're like, come downstairs, have dinner with us. You know, we got a proposition for you. And basically, this, this Tony, Tony guy was, he was kind of like a bouncer, eventually became mater d' of this club in New York. Um, but he was like quite the fighter and, and, you know, and mob bosses, I guess, had approached him before to have him do do some jobs. You know, and so, anyways, Ooh. he he he. If you know what I'm Dr. Saying. Don Shirley sees him leaving the hotel room to go downstairs to talk to his buddies, and then in Italian, he asks in fluent Italian, he asks he asks Tony, he says, "Where are you going?" And when he said that, I was like, "Oh shit!" He knew everything they were saying, and it didn't surprise me because. Um, because he spoke Russian fluently, and I mean, this dude was—he was a double PhD, was like a virtuoso in piano. The funny thing was too is one of the concerts he gave in the beginning, when Tony was watching, is they they introduced Dr. Don Shirley, and they said he was a virtuoso, and he he looked at one of the the uh, the black guys that was like one of the helpers down Mulians. south. <laughs> God damn it, Jared! And he <laughs> and he and he and he says and he says to the guy like the guy didn't know he's like yeah virtuoso is Italian for someone who's real good at something, and uh, <laughs> and the guy just kind of looked at him like okay guy like you know so but yeah so it was it was a good movie though I thought it was really really touching obviously it's very Hollywood esque you know with the happy ending and blah 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 mm. but one for me it was just interesting because I you know obviously I'm aware that there's a lot of racism down south and there still is to this day but i had no idea that they had like this green book of establishments where black guys could stay and there's one scene in the movie where he and the whole thing of the movie too is dr don shirley he kind of feels weird because he's he's very educated and he doesn't feel like he's a part of the black community but because this is still in the 50s and 60s he also doesn't feel like he's obviously welcome in the white community he's basically kind of this this like entertainment piece for them, this circus act for them in the white community. So he's like not really accepted by either community. And, mm. uh, and so, so that was like really interesting to kind of watch and, and it's based on a true story as well. And the, the crazy thing is, is that, well, it's not crazy, but uh, Tony and Dr. Don Shirley stayed friends until they died in their nineties. Mm, okay. So it was a good movie. Yeah, I'm going to be with you. I'm yeah. be honest with you right now. This is great. I'm glad I actually got to hear about this movie. 
Um, I'm not here for movie reviews. Just that's true. That's true. <laughs> What's the, the last, last movie, movie you I watched? watched though? Is, I was gonna say this is the third movie, and I'm right. I'm so curious. I so want to ask you questions about being in China, and I'm learning about a movie. But what was the last movie you watched? The last movie I watched, and we don't need to review it because it's super famous, and I've seen it numerous times. Was Forrest Gump? Watched it because I was okay. trying to sleep, and I figured if I put on a movie that I like, and then you also cried during that too. I'd fall asleep. <laughs> I did not. Um, I did actually not. have not seen that movie more than maybe once, and like I've on seen TV it four or five times. Okay, it's a long movie though, but uh, but yeah, it was good. And and then I slept on the plane. So then let's let's get to well, let's get to your questions, Jared. I've done too much talking. Okay, so um, what what was what was it like getting there? So I know you got picked up by someone, and and mm-hmm. um. He took, well, first of all, what was the weather like? That's what I want to know. What was the airport like? Oh, man. Well, the airport was giant, <laughs> gigantic, humongous. It was huge. Bigger than um, any sort of airport I've ever seen before? Kind of big? I, I would assume so, yeah. Okay. Um, I, th- I think it makes the Frankfurt airport look tiny, and that's also a very large oh, wow. airport. Um, and it took us almost 30 minutes from when we landed on the runway to our gate. Now, we were stopped for maybe 10 minutes. Um, and the funny thing was they said we were stopped for, what did they say? It was like weird the way they phrase it. They said we, we were stopped uh, waiting um, for, um, I think they said like special reasons or something weird like that. So I don't even know what that means. Um, <laughs> so we had to wait on the runway yeah, for that's about shady. 10 minutes. And then we eventually got to our gate. And then the walk inside the airport, we had to go and uh and uh, have our fingerprints taken and then i have this little slip that says okay by immigration um so they said to hang on to that when you leave china like i if if all goes well with my residency permit and everything then i will be going to mongolia at the end of september so i'll need to keep that little slip with me from immigration then after that we had a long walk and then we uh, went through customs which was fine um I gave them my arrival slip, and I th- I was worried because there wasn't a date there, but I had written my university on the slip, and so I think that was, you know, and had they have asked me, I would have told them, you know, I'm sorry, but I don't know my apartment address yet. Um, I, I To be honest, I didn't even know until I, I got here where, where my apartment would be. I figured, worst case scenario, they'd put me up in a hotel for a day or two if they were still getting my apartment ready. Um, so I went through there, and then I had to grab my luggage, and it took us quite a while to get all the luggage now, there were tons and tons of people there, so it doesn't really surprise me. It took us quite a few, uh, it took us at least half an hour, maybe 45 minutes to get the luggage and everything. So, so yeah, but got all my luggage, and then we met our uh, uh, driver, Robert was his English name, and he drove us from the airport to uh, our hotel. Our hotel is in what they call the embassy district here, and it's a really nice district of Beijing. Uh, very westernized though a lot of western style restaurants and a lot of english around um so for me i think it's a nice transition because it's i'm not dropped in a place where there's no english anywhere um the food's all just chinese food and uh so yeah so i think it's a good transition for me being here in beijing to jinan where i'll be a little bit more isolated um so yeah so that was good i will tell you this though jared the drive was really crazy because here you have to be a very aggressive and assertive driver. Otherwise, mm-hmm. people are just going to cut in front of you everywhere. And there were a couple of very close calls. I wasn't really too worried about it because I'm like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. He's probably been what a driver his, for a you while. You just got to tell what his car looks like. The car was fine. No yeah, dents, exactly. no dings. So we exactly. were good. That's not the but first the time he's done this. With, <laughs> right. But the funny thing was is I was with a few other of my colleagues. Uh, we all landed oh. in Beijing around the same time. Actually, the three of us were all on the same flight from Detroit. They had layovers in Detroit. And so the funny thing about it, though, was that um, is I, I didn't make any sounds, but my, my colleague sitting next to me, she, she made a couple like, ooh, and like kind of those sounds because she was worried. Mm-hmm. Holding on to the door a little, a little harder right. than usual. Right. And, it, right. and there were lots of uh, honking, you know, honking of the horn um, over here. And, uh, yeah, but it was just crazy. I've never seen that kind of traffic. But the other thing that boggled my mind was when we landed in Beijing, um, it was gray and it was because of the smog and the air pollution. And at first I was, at first I was like me being a naive first timer here in China. I was like, Oh, is it just a foggy day today? Or is that pollution? And I asked uh, a friend of mine who had been here before and she was like, Nope, that's straight up pollution. So, 
Um, so thankfully I brought a mask over here with me and I wore it the first two days I've been here in Beijing. So it's already come in handy. I didn't wear it when we walked around in the beginning on Monday and uh, definitely had a plugged nose for a little while. And, uh, and I was only outside for a couple of hours. So, so I can't even imagine what increased exposure to, to this air pollution can be like. Sorry for cutting you off, Jared. You actually noticed a difference with the mask? Oh, yeah, for sure. It's interesting. I was um, looking up things to know when moving it, like 15, like, things to know, learn before you move to China from America. Mm-hmm. And number three, surgical masks don't do anything. This person said, I just want to see what this person says. When I moved to China four years ago, I had no idea what the uh, pollution level was. None of us had apps Mm -hmm. on our phones, and we didn't wear masks either. Thankfully, most of us are a little more educated nowadays. However, the Western media and even the Chinese government has done a horrible job teaching people. Oh, this is so long. How to... uh, no, nah, nah, it's really not. I'm just lazy. Uh, how to protect themselves. <laughs> when you see images of very polluted days in China, they're often accompanied by photos of people in surgical masks. While these masks are great for keeping yourself from getting sick on a crowded subway, they will not work for the pollution at all. Seriously, don't bother buying them. <laughs> Why do you need to protect yourself then? A gas mask? Well, that's one opinion, but I prefer the what? Yeah, so they say that it's not really worth it. But if you feel if you feel a difference, then I would say it's worth it. Well, I'm I'm gonna stop you there, Jared. I don't wear a surgical mask. What kind of mask do you wear? Like a it's one of those a, Rick Hamilton nose masks? Well, so it's it comes <laughs> it comes over here like this. I feel like I'm in like Mad Max or something like that. When does I it have the leather with like the a little bandit. like uh? <laughs> it, it doesn't. It's it's like, like a it's teeth. like a. Maybe with me- metal like teeth a, on it, polyester. No, Ooh, no metal teeth. Sexy. You, 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 can, you can get you can get some with cool designs on them. My friend. Uh, my friend Kelly has a really cool one. It's like purple and has some like nice flowers on it. So that looks okay. nice. But no, so so the masks you want to get is from China Supreme? are... It, it's not. I should put a Supreme sticker on there. I'd probably block the filter so that defeats the purpose. But um, my my mask... Um, but you look cool. It's called... There's two two types of carbon filters you can get. You can get N95 or N99. And they're basically... It's, it's a couple different sheets of like fabric... Um, that have different like there's a cotton one and there's a, a different style of cloth and and these all filter the air particles um, and so you want an N95 or N99 mask if you just go on Google or Amazon or here in China Bing and you type in Cambridge mask those are pretty good Respiro is another good uh, reputable company now for me I wanted to get a mask that had a velcro strap in the back because usually they just connect at your ears and, uh, and they kind of push your ears forward, and they don't look very comfortable. So the one I get, it does have the ear flaps, but it also has the Velcro strap. And when I tighten the strap on the Velcro, it doesn't really, which goes around my neck, it, the back of my neck, it doesn't pull on my ears as much. So that would be my other tip. But yeah, so masks are um, must. Uh, do you have to wear it in Jinan too? Oh, yeah. I've heard the air quality in Jinan is actually worse than Beijing. Oh, my uh, gosh. In, in Beijing, it used to be pretty bad, but uh, what they've done is they've moved a lot of the factories out of Beijing. And where they've moved them is to my province called Shandong. Mm. So there you go. Now, do you do these masks have like uh, like replaceable filters that you replace every now yeah. and again? So you can actually... I brought 12 filters with me. So you can actually see uh, like like what it's filtering out. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, well, oh, you can no. see how dirty they get. Yeah. Oh man, are you yep. concerned for your health? Nope. Nope. I think the masks will do a good job. I bought. I bought. I brought a lot of replacement filters with me, and if if I run out of the filters, I'm sure I can find them. You don't um, have to wear them I'm inside. Sure, I'm sure it'll be fine. So inside. Now, how does that work? Buy, <laughs> inside, you buy an air purifier for your room, and I actually have an air purifier in my room here in Beijing, and I have it running right now. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is your hotel so room. Yes, hmm. and that's one of the first things I plan on buying once I get to Jinan is buy an air. I've heard depending on how big your apartment is, you may need one, you may need two. It really depends. Do you have it to put like on where you're living in China? Do you have to put like water in it or something? The filters. You replace the filters. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, they're they're electronic. So you, there's no sort of opening your windows on a nice day in 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 your Chinese apartment. Um, I'm not sure. I have an app. Um, called I believe it's called like Air Visual or something. If you just Google Air Quality China, or sorry, not Google, but if you go to the App Store, Air oh, Quality we China, um, 
well, WeChat won't do you any. I mean, that that's just like a messaging app. Well, we'll, we'll talk about WeChat another day once I get my uh, Chinese SIM card and I get everything uh, functioning there. But anyway, so the thing about um, the air quality is there are apps where you can look it up. And so I think a healthy healthy level is usually oh, under no. 100, 100 particles. Uh, unhealthy is anywhere above like like moderate is I think 100, 150 or so. And sometimes in China, it can be all the way up to 300, which is incredibly unhealthy, and you should be wearing a mask. Otherwise, there can be... Okay, 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 okay. Stop bumming me out. You're making me nervous here for okay. your safety okay. and health. I have another question for you. When you're... Mm-hmm. Um, have you noticed any sort of... Uh, what am I looking for? Any sort of, like, interesting, either simple or, or complicated technological advancements that uh, have seem obvious and make your life simpler? Well, I haven't been here long enough to to really get the full impression of a lot of the technology, but I do know that they they deliver everything here. It's awesome. Um, so, I mean, you can get your groceries delivered. You can get everything under the sun more or less delivered um, mm. using WeChat or well, probably not WeChat. Probably something like they have a they have an app called Taobao, which is kind of like the I guess in a way kind of like Chinese Amazon. Um, so they have that. Um, and, and the other thing is, too, as I may have mentioned in a previous episode, um, they do a lot of you can just pay directly on your phone. Mm-hmm. Um, not I mean, kind of like Apple Pay. Like if you have a Chinese bank account, you can set it up so your WeChat is linked to it. So you can WeChat pay basically where you will hold your phone up and then the cashier will scan your phone and then it takes it directly from your bank account. Then they also have another type of pay called Alipay which I'm pretty sure is uh, under the affiliate of um, Alibaba, which is that like huge um, Chinese uh, website where you can buy pretty much everything as well. Um, so I think just the, the phone payment seems to be very, very common here. Um, and I've even been told that some people don't even really carry around cash anymore uh, because they can pay you know, with their phone, which also means that you will always see people here in China with um, like portable... Uh, batteries so they can recharge oh, their yeah. phones because yeah. obviously you phone know, is you don't life. cash with you and your phone dies exactly but yeah and i thought i thought that we were into we were really dependent on our phones in the states i think here it's on another level um and from what i've been told too like people use wechat obviously for almost everything here but the other thing is too it's very common i guess as a westerner people will ask you for your wechat all the time um and one of my colleagues told me she had to straight up just tell tell people like you know un- unless unless you are significant like really planning on becoming my friend i can't just keep adding all these people i don't know on wechat um so that was kind of interesting <laughs> i will i will say i have why is it just because really you're different you're well there well there come there comes a point i guess with your wechat i don't, I don't know what the number is oh, i understand why you she wouldn't want to accept random people i meant right. why, why there, like random people asking I think it's because um, they're curious. They want to get to know Westerners and they want to. Hmm. Um, and I've also been told, I don't know how true this is, but I've been told that it's kind of like a cool thing to have like a Western friend. Oh. So, so there you go. Um, We're cool accessories. Yeah, so, is that what we are to you people? Okay, I see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, But, you know, Beijing, obviously, because it's such an international city, I've seen a lot of, um, you know, foreigners here. Um so, right. so I think I'll really get more of a culture shock once I make it to Jinan. It'll be very different. Hmm. And it's so interesting to me because Jinan is still like a big city. It's right. just not yeah. a big city oh, yeah. in, in the scale of, of chi- relative to China. Right. Right. Um, what's, so uh, so um, are you getting fed? What are you eating? Who's feeding you? What are you? Are you OK? Are you do you need me to send um, something? <laughs> yes, I could send, send a send box of pop tarts. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Speaking of pop tarts, my mom tried to be tried to be nice and got pop tarts before I left, and neither of them had frosting on them. And I was like, "I'm I'm not gonna eat that." <laughs> I felt like such a jerk, but I was, was like, <laughs> "I was like, mom, she was trying to be nice, and I, I love you for it, mom." We were just but having this conversation at like, your house a couple weeks ago, weren't we? She was saying she loves so, the yeah. uh, the like loves them without frosting, and both you and I were like, "No, that's a, an abomination right. of pop tarts." <sighs> right, right. I cu- also, I though, eat off the edges just... first so I can save the best for last and just have frosting. There you go. Why why don't they just frost the whole thing at this point? Like they have to have the technology for it. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. 
I agree with you. And maybe don't make the maybe crust edges so big. Money. Right. Yeah. Have, have, anyways, have it go though, out a little bit further. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, so, so you asked the, what have I been eating? So, so the first day we went to this place, oh, what was it called now? Like I said, so we're in the embassy district and there's some really big shopping malls and food courts and it's fairly westernized. So we went to a place and I had, it was called black pepper lemon chicken. So it was basically, it was this chicken with this really good like sauce on it. It was crispy. Um, and then I had rice with it and steamed broccoli and that was delicious. Um, I got chopsticks with it. I tried to eat it, but the chicken pieces were so big that I don't have the strength and dexterity yet in my hand with chopsticks <laughs> to the point where I could hold them and bring them to my mouth. Thankfully, at that restaurant in Beijing, uh-huh. most restaurants around where I'm staying have forks and knives, so it was fine. Um, but yeah, so I ended up eating that with my fork and knife. Felt a little bit like a failure and felt defeated. That's okay, but, buddy. Um, and the, the, the thing is, too, with chopsticks, you don't want to stab food with them like that's not the point of chopsticks so the pieces were you know they were they were decent they were like a a large sized boneless chicken wing size Mm -hmm. um so so they were fairly but the food was the only one not using a um uh not using no everybody most people that we went to out to eat with um they had ordered sandwiches and others and soups so so the soups obviously are a spoon sandwiches are with your fingers so that was fine. Uh, <laughs> I was fingers. actually the only one that had kind of an Asian style uh, meal at that restaurant, but it Look looked at really you. good. So I tried it, and then and then yesterday we went to a really good. It's funny the name of the restaurant was called the Bellagio, but it uh. was like a Taiwanese style restaurant, I guess, and the food was amazing. So what they did is we went with our uh, language officers here at the embassy, and so they took us there and and. Um, they basically ordered for us. So they just ordered because the, the way that most places in China, the way it works is you order a couple different dishes and you share with people, um, which I think is awesome. And so it gets, gives you the opportunity to try more stuff. So I had this really, really delicious asparagus. It was like cooked asparagus and that was super tasty. It had like some some seasoning on it and some like uh, cracked pepper, I think, on it. And that was delicious. Um, and believe it or not, Jared, I tried almost everything. Uh, there were a couple veggies i didn't try just because um, (laughs) they look grody well from what from what i've been told is if it's raw vegetables it will if you're a western it can make you sick and i didn't want to spend this morning Mm. on the toilet all day that's fair i'll give that to you so so but i had some really good really good spicy pork and cooked cabbage and so it was with these spicy peppers and this really good vinegar sauce and that was delicious uh and then i had like beef with this like brown sauce and um, steamed broccoli, and the food was amazing, dude. Like, and well, so the food was delicious, and uh, and I have to say I ate the majority of my meal with chopsticks. I was pretty proud of myself, Jared. But oh, my hands started congratulations! To get sore. Right, I know it's a small victory sometimes <laughs> that that make. I, I felt uh, super, how did you figure it out between? How did you figure out between that day and or in the day before? Well, one. Well, well, the difference was is the pieces weren't as big, so so the the food I was eating, oh, you okay. know, these pieces of chicken were fairly large, um, and so so I just couldn't pick them up, and I couldn't didn't have the grip strength to like hold them in the chopstick and pick them up. Whereas this stuff, you know, it was vegetables, it was smaller pieces of beef and mushrooms and 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 pork, so it was much easier to pick up. Um, but my hands started to get sore, so then I did start to use the soup spoon. To, to eat my food um but okay. i didn't have to whip out my <laughs> utensils um oh and that's so, good you know and, at least you yeah, don't have to whip so out until, your safety utensils that would that's right right and i i asked a few of my my colleagues here how long it took them to be able to eat uh with chopsticks fairly easily and a lot of them said it took them about two or three weeks when they were using them every day you don't know anyone that knows that how to dexterity eat, i feel like i know i feel like most of the people i know know how to use chopsticks i feel like i'm the worst chopstick user in my friend group okay i'm i'm still pretty terrible at it but well, besides we'll, we'll you there, i guess so. um right. okay did so what about like breakfast and lunch and stuff where do you go so like what do you so breakfast so breakfast well lunch was that uh meal at the bellagio that time oh, okay. restaurant yesterday Breakfast is provided by the hotel, which I'll be grabbing after we're done with this. I'm going to head down in, in about an hour. Um, need to pack up some things. But anyways, and the breakfast here, dude, it's great because they have a mixture of what I would consider like more westernized breakfast. So like they have croissants, 
a croissant. They have rolls. <laughs> they have eggs. But what's crazy though, dude, is they have chicken wings. Like I was going Ooh, through the thing where they have the like that's nice the trays with the food, and they have chicken wings for breakfast. I guess that's, that's a nice. normal thing in China. So I had a couple chicken wings I mean, why yesterday not? morning for breakfast. <laughs> exactly. When I saw them, I was like, and they were good. They were they were like seasoned a little bit, and they were a little spicy, and they were crispy. And uh, so I'm gonna have some chicken wings this morning too. And they had bacon. Uh, the bacon was the bacon was interesting. It was thicker in terms of like you know in, in the states we have like thin strips usually of bacon. Here it was thicker and it was shorter. Uh, so they were like, it was almost the yeah, chode like of three, bacon. Maybe. I'm sorry. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm so but sorry. the bacon was pretty good. Okay. They had like different soups. They had dim sum. Oh um, yeah. Which is like for breakfast like dumplings. Yeah. They Dude, had this sounds this amazing. Bre- breakfast spread is great. <laughs> yeah. Oh so Jared, my god. So Jared, if you decide if you decide to come visit me, Ooh. um, you're not making uh, the me any of that. Called, oh, you're telling me to stay at a what? hotel? I can't stay with you. <laughs> I mean, you, you could, but I can't make you that stuff. Not authentic. Chinese yeah, but food do like I? That. Do you have to be a uh, stay at the hotel to get the food? You could. You could probably go there, and I mean, yeah. it's a restaurant, so I would assume. Oh, you probably okay. Could. Okay. Um, but yeah, the 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 food spread for breakfast is great, making me hungry already thinking about it. Have, um, and then for dinner last night, I had pizza because I was told by a couple of my colleagues like. Eat Western food now because once you get to your locations, it's either going to be very expensive or very hard to find. And the pizza wasn't bad. It was like a flatbread uh, salami pizza. So it was pretty good. Okay. We're, we're, like it was not, like, a, not, not like an American chain, not like Pizza Hut or something? Well, it's, so it's a chain here. It's called Pizza uh, Marzano. And it's okay. a chain here in, in China. But it was, it was very good. Italian sounding. It was pretty good. Right. Have you, have you had a lot of time, uh, not a lot, have you had any time to wander? Not really. Um, Have you? You haven't seen the the city. No, not really at all. Um, I've been. We had a a long meeting and briefing yesterday at the embassy, and the embassy here in China is huge. It takes up like two blocks almost. It's gigantic. So that was really cool seeing the embassy. Um, And actually, our hotel is like a two-minute walk from the German embassy, which is this cool-looking red building, which is pretty sweet. so I haven't really explored it too much. I've been to the two like little kind of shopping areas around here just to kind of look around and see stuff. Um, but yeah, I haven't been to the sites yet, but I'll be back in Beijing in a couple weeks. So I'm hoping to do some more exploration of the city then. Plus, dude, I've been so... My sense of time and jet lag right now has been so off. Like the first night I got here, I was struggling and I went to bed at 8. Last night I was also struggling and I went to bed at 8.30 and... and, and Tuesday morning, I woke up at 4. Yesterday, uh, this morning, I woke up at 3.30. But was oh, able to fall back asleep. wrong direction. Yep. Okay. But I'm hoping to, if I can keep, not great. keep waking up early. What? So not great. <laughs> it's, it's not great, but I'm hoping to be able to continue uh, going to bed early and waking up early. Just because, one, it's like I'll be living so far out from downtown. I don't envision myself staying up late unless I'm like, playing guitar or like watching like videos online or something um so so you yeah. have all these so, very odd like expectations of like you don't see yourself staying up late what is that what do you mean what does that even mean you don't see yourself ever like going just, out or anything or making friends i just don't i don't see the point in staying up late if i'm so far away from everything all my colleagues are going to be a 40 minute shuttle bus which i'm sure ends around 8 or 9 p.m uh, and that's an hour taxi ride and so yeah so i'm sure so you have no way to get around after eight o'clock is what you're telling me well no i could take a a cab or a dd like a chinese Uh, uber but it's still an hour ride. i got you what do they call the chinese uber dd is the name of the app dd d-i-d-i okay yep Yep. oh okay so that's interesting um, i'm just i'm just right so public transportation is not like a Well, yeah, it but, is, but you have to you have to navigate it, and I can't read any of the symbols. Other than DD, if I use public transportation like buses, I I'll have to know which which characters I need to stop at, and I, I need to know my way around. Uh, so it's going to be a bit more difficult getting my way around, is what I'm trying to say. Plus, I'm just trying to be a responsible responsible adult here, Jared. Why are you trying to be a responsible adult now? Like why now's now? Now's the time, Jared. Now's okay. the time. 
I'm done with summer vacation. It's time. We're we'll talking like two weeks, dude, and you're gonna. That's fair. This is, and it's gonna be totally different. You, you like you have no faith in yourself being able to like figure that stuff out, or at least like. Oh no, I I, I get do. like landmarks down where at least people be like, well, I know that this is what it looks like out the window at the stop I'm supposed to get at, or I know right. what it sounds like when the lady over says it over I'll, the, I'll the definitely, thing. Right, I'll definitely figure it out. I just unless I am with friends, I just if if I'm. Uh, basically what i mean jerry is if i'm at home at my apartment like i don't really see the point in staying up late like i stayed up so late at my parents house and it was just like watching like tv and like stupid stuff and i probably would have been much more productive had i've just gone to bed earlier that was my yeah. whole point with this i get that i just don't today. understand what makes you think that you yeah. can now that just because you're no longer at home you're now better at not randomly watching youtube videos right you know i get what you're saying though but uh, you know what I, you're your argument here, I'm not. It's thin. It's thin. <laughs> <clears throat> we'll, we'll find out. Our I guess, lawyers huh? are, are not liking it. Um, so, uh, so the jet lag's been pretty been rough, but um, at least you're still relatively on schedule. Like you're not. It's not mm-hmm. like two in the afternoon. And you're like, all right, time for bed, or like I need to take a nap or something like that. I mean, I did feel like that yesterday for sure. I guess that makes but sense. Had some coffee uh, and powered through. So, what are the beds like? What 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 are uh, the the beds like at the hotel and the bathroom? Do they have a bidet? The bathroom the bathroom's great. I actually have one of those Toto uh, Japanese toilets, so it has like the bidet and like a. I haven't used any. I should have, I guess, tried out the bells and whistles, but I didn't. But it has like the bidet from there. Uh, you can like heat the toilet seat, all that stuff. Um, oh, so yeah, this, have you been doing yeah, that? I haven't. No. No, I should have, but I haven't. You haven't heated um, the toilet the bed, seat. The beds here. I didn't. No, no. I'm. I've been boring, Jared. I know. I know. But I'm sure. I'm sure this won't be the only place I'll be where they have right. this. Um, but yeah. But the bathroom's great. Um, this hotel room is is huge. Um, it's it's fairly expensive, but I think it's because it's in the like embassy district. The bed's fairly comfortable, although the beds here are definitely a lot firmer uh, than mm. in the states. Um, I would say it's a it's a little bit smaller than a queen size bed, but it's super comfy. Um, and yeah, the the amenities here have been great. I haven't used them, but there's a pool and a gym in the hotel. Um, maybe I should have used the gym to help with the jet lag, but I've been so exhausted I didn't. Um, so yeah, but things have been good. I'm really excited so, though to see Jinan and, and head there. So you've still had minimal associations, or excuse me, not associations, minimal interactions with locals or having to deal with people or anything like that, or like deal with Correct. situations, like real life situations, what I mean. All right. Correct. Uh, yeah. We'll save those then, because I, I think a lot of my questions are about like, uh, did you do any sort of social activities? Have you, uh, has the language barrier been an issue? It doesn't seem like those things have really applied yet. We will have to save some of this for a um, later date because you haven't really had any opportunities to interact with uh, society or with like language barriers or sort of going out or experience right. any sort of like the city in any sort of real way. Correct. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This has just been the, the baby steps, I would say, into China right now. Just kind of dipping my toe in the water. I haven't fully jumped in yet, but I'm sure... After today, I will. Um, so we'll have yeah. we'll have more coming your way. That's for sure. This is good though. I, I'm excited. I'm excited to hear about it, and I'm glad the food's been good. Do you feel like even though it's, oh, been, it's good, been good, amazing. you're still you're still like like is, this isn't going to last for long? I think I think it will. I'm just trying to be very careful with what I eat, um, and I know eventually it's the the, the bathroom party is going to happen at some point. <laughs> but uh, I've accepted it. It is what it is. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to see what this year has to bring. So, so yeah, but, uh, on that note though, Jared, I think we should start to talk about our song of the pod for today. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to find something. So I found the song of the pod because someone decided to sleep, uh, at five in the morning. Okay. <laughs> um, um, no, the song of the pod was, is, um, called without you by, I don't really know what his Chinese name is. You're going to have to figure that out. But it's OSN Gao. I think it's his real... I don't know. That's not his real name. But like, that's I think stage that's his name. his stage name. I, th- I think. But anyway, 
I wanted to find popular, um, like I wanted to find some popular Chinese artist and music for you. So you know, when you start going out and trying to meet people, you can be like, "Hey, have you heard?" Granted, I, it would help if I knew the name of the person. Um, Ois and Gao, and the person will be like, "Oh my gosh, I love Ois and Gao," and you can be like, "Oh, right. my favorite songs without you." Uh, you should hear what I had to say about this great song on the Untranslatable podcast. Five stars, please. Spread a little love. Um, but uh, he's a he's actually Taiwanese, um, so I guess the Chinese would call him Chinese. And um, he uh, is a hip hop singer, hip hop artist. And um, you know, it's it's. I'm not gonna say it's amazing. Uh, you know, it's a good. It, it's it's a song that I enjoyed. I didn't hate it or anything. But I'm probably not gonna listen to it. But I was trying to find popular music for you to talk about, and I did enjoy it. And what I liked about the rapping part of it, because he also sang a little bit, is that he does both the. Um, he he does. He has a lot of like random English words thrown in there, like many mm-hmm. other artists we've seen do before in various non English speaking right. languages. And um, right. the way he does it sounds almost kind of like a uh, staticky. Like I don't know. Like I don't think it even works that well. <laughs> and in I, all I the know, cases, I, I, hmm. okay. I feel like it stands out too much. And maybe that's just to my ear. Could be. Could be. I really liked the song. Um, I loved the chorus and the hook. I mm-hmm. thought they were fantastic. Then again, as you mentioned at the top of the pod, Jared, I guess I'm overly positive. I'm too positive. But um, also, yeah, I mean, to be, yeah. Another important question is what can and can't you say and I say? Do you feel like you're um, more susceptible to not being able to say things now? Oh, definitely. For sure. Okay. Yeah. Like on we, our pod? We can talk, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, good to know. Yeah, Look we're, forward we're to that. Be, right. Everyone. Well, well I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you right now, Jared, I'm, I'm going to be steering clear of politics. Um, uh, okay. I mean, U.S. politics are fine, but I'm going to be steering clear of politics over here. That's fine. Um, I don't really know anything and, anyway. And, so. and that stuff. <laughs> I mean, same here. And I also feel like, you know... But are you, like, who, afraid... Who like, I? are you afraid to laugh at, like, some terrible joke I might make because... um. Uh, like they're gonna be bit. like, how dare you support um, such such things? Look, I'm I'm not gonna lie, a little bit. I mean, we've just been told to be very cautious of what we say and what we put out there, and so well, I I'm trying that to keep that in mind for a very specific reason because that is a struggle with uh, rap and hip hop in uh, China. Is that a lot of people have had music banned, or a lot of people have kind of been told what to say? Some rappers right. have had to go back and apologize for certain lyrics that they've said in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And something I noticed about uh, this OS and Gao music video that I watched, which you couldn't pull up because I sent you an American YouTube link, but was mm-hmm. that it almost had this sort of like he's, in, I mean, I guess he is, he's not an adult, he's 22, but it did have this sort of like childish sort of like. Not even childish, but it seemed childish like the depictions of it. But it did have this sort of like simplified to my eye uh, hiding or like um, rebellion against authority, like like sneakily smoking a joint or something like that and like running away from like a or it's like, you know, in an American rapper, like talking about like sneakily smoking a joint. People would be like, who cares? You know, like, (laughs) Um, right. And it did almost seem like, to my eyes, like a very like uh, childish form of rebellion. It seemed like. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think I, it's I just because I couldn't tell you. I think it's just because, and this is me saying this, not Chad. This is Jared, the one. <laughs> but I think it's just because their lines are so much more defined there, and Absolutely. and and you're t- making taking so much more of a risk by crossing those lines, that uh, mm-hmm. it's just an interesting form. It 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 it. it it sort of makes sense for hip hop or rap to be a good genre to work there because, you know, in general, hip hop for, uh, formed as a form of rebellion or a form of like fighting back Absolutely. against um, mm-hmm. the authorities. And it's like these li- and it's like, oh, yeah, I mean, this, it almost seems like hip hop has so much more space to grow uh, there because the lines are so much more defined and there's still consequences, like legitimate consequences. Who's oh, willing to actually, you know, test those li- limits for the art right yeah i agree with you i think the the hooks are great though 
I like his voice. Um, and it was, I thought it was cool to hear a mixture of, um, I liked it. I didn't dislike it. I just felt like, I felt like I noticed it more than I might. And like, say, and you know, I'm not going to even include German where I roughly understand what's going on, but even like that Swedish song that we listened to one time that had like English, I, even there I felt like, but maybe it's just because these languages are, are I'm more used to like that, the tone of, of certainly, I don't know. I don't know, but right. I did like the song too. That's why I chose it. You know, I, I didn't want to, I don't want you to be put like, you know, if I'm trying to give you conversation starters, I wanted it to be something good. I'm sure I'm on your side here, Chad. Right. I know it doesn't seem right. like it all the time, but believe I me, I am. I appreciate it, buddy. Yeah. So check that out on our YouTube channel, untranslatable podcast, OSN without you. Um, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, Jared, speaking of Chinese, it's time for my Chinese word of the pod and it is Xin. And Xin is uh, Mandarin for new. I thought that would be a fitting word since I am okay. new to China, and everything yeah. so far is very new and exciting. I have a Spanish word, and I'm. I'll say it. I'll say it first. It's confundido. Confundido. I've heard it before. I've definitely heard it before. What does it mean? It's interesting. You've heard it before, yet you're struggling to figure out the definite the translation of it what would you say you were like you're like oh man i'm confused I, there you go there you go confused that's it Parada. Yeah. um yeah. but yeah. i don't even think that applies yet i was expecting for you to have had way more um like interaction on your own or experience or opportunities to go out on your own you haven't really had any situations that you would that would that could put you in a confundido 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 situation they drove you everywhere or you could right. walk there and you didn't really get a chance to explore on your own or anything. Exactly. Yeah, you're 100% correct. But um, she but will I'm be sure soon. That will be coming. For sure. Yeah, I'm sure that will be coming <laughs> soon. Well, Jared, I wanted to find some cheesy travel jokes. So, uh, so here we go. So, Jared, why did the librarian get kicked off the plane? Uh, why is that? Because it was overbooked. Ooh. <laughs> I like that one. Right. And my last one for you, Jared, is when will pigs fly? Um, when they buy a spirit ticket. <laughs> I would say when we launch them to Mars for astronauts to have bacon. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Both are kind of goofy, but yeah. But yeah, you're right though, Jared. I think yeah. uh, the whole idea of confundido hasn't quite hit me yet. But um, I would say just to wrap up today's episode, so far my impressions of China have been more or less, once again, overwhelmingly positive. But I think a lot of that has to do with where I'm currently staying in Beijing and the fact that I'm also with all of my colleagues and they, a lot of my colleagues have been here before. So I feel like I'm... You're in right a safe a space sheltered. and zone, exactly. yeah. You haven't had to actually exactly. test any part of your traveling or, you know, immersing into a new culture abilities yet. Correct. But that's coming up soon. So for all of our yeah. listeners out there, stay tuned because I'm sure I'll have some stories. That's for sure. Oh, I look forward to for it. Sure. We'll hear about all the bathroom disasters. <laughs> oh, yeah. In great, in great detail. In great detail. That's for sure. Well, uh, Jared, yeah. it's been great to catch up with you, and I'm glad yeah, that man. we could discuss some of my first impressions of China and my travel over here. And I'm excited to get to Jinan, and uh, if I can get everything to work there, hopefully there will be some pictures coming your way and everybody else's way. So we want to thank everyone for listening and supporting this podcast. And uh, if you want to see pictures of our travels and adventures, check us out on Instagram, Untranslatable Podcast. You can also check out Jared's uh, cunning wit on twitter untranslatable one the number one also drop us a line at untranslatable podcast at gmail.com if you have any untranslatables topic ideas Spread or anything a little you'd love. Like us to discuss on the show and lastly please 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 do not forget five star reviews on itunes and stitcher would be greatly appreciated. let us know what we can do to make this podcast better for you so as we say here at the untranslatable podcast the cuyame which is gracias and sure, sure.